I just came home from a LARP. Uh, it's very warm outside. I'm very sweaty under all this costume. I take most of all the costume off. Looking forward to get the rest of it off though. But I'm totally hyped, so I wanted to record it right now. Let, let's get on to this quick tip. It's from you guys, and it's a follow up on using some uh, allergy friendly stuff for alchemy. Tardis Blue 1963. I'm guessing that's a Doctor Who fan. Or, yeah, uh, otherwise, very convenient. May I suggest using rice flour as an alternative just in case players are allergic to wheat? I'm guessing that the Tardis means rice flour, like the thing that you use to bake with and not the flour, because, now correct me if my English is wrong, but I'm guessing don't spell flour that way. Fl flour. Fl it sounds really similar, okay? I make the same mistake. It's the powder stuff. This quick tip is a follow up on, I think it's uh, something to do with the magic stuff where we talk about that you can use f uh, flour, or you, do, you, you know, um, wheat flour for magical rituals. Uh, so, or if you have to use it in spells, if you actually throw the flour or like in spells where you actually have to use it as a sort of indicate if you're touching somebody with a spell, like a cloud, now, I don't personally know if people uh, with like gluten allergies actually do get um, rashes from getting it on their fingers. I guess it would be kind of nice, especially if you get it in your like airways, lungs, eyes and stuff like that. Definitely an alternative to, to wheat, but it's a little pricey though, depending on where you live. But you could also use grains or something like that or rice just in itself. Uh, depending on what LARP you're running in, uh, but but it all depends on rules. Anyway, let's talk about some more allergic quick tips. Well, not quick tips that you're allergic to, but quick tips about allergies. Use only natural herbs and ingredients to use for smells rather than store-bought colognes and perfumes. Also, avoid the common food-based allergic reactions by not incorporating those elements, not elements, items, into your medicines that causes these reactions. Pe peanut, coconut, shellfish are a few of the common ones. Just a few thoughts. This quick tip is a follow up on the doctor quick tip um, that we did a long way back where it's like, if you have smelling salt or if you're like an alchemist, did you use different smells in your the things that you're making? But especially if you're like a doctor and uh, you use perfumes on your patients, like uh, in, in olden times, you would use all weird sort of stuff. So yeah, it makes totally sense to like avoid perfume just in general. Don't spray anything on anybody without like their permission. First of all, just something to keep in mind. You don't want anybody to get like an allergic reaction for something that you actually sprayed in their face. Secondly, yes, of course, avoiding the common food allergies, very good idea to do. That way you don't accidentally poison people for real. But then again, like, like you've ordered this like peanut, coconut, shellfish, but also something like citrus fruit, uh, lemon, uh, what, what else? What else people like allergic for? People can be allergic really to anything. So just a really good common thing to do is not to put some potion you make into somebody's mouth without actually asking them first. Just don't, don't stop something into people that you don't know if they're gonna swallow up and turn red or green or whatever color they're not painted on their faces and uh, actually need to go to the hospital. Don't don't actually hurt people for real. That, that, I don't think anybody wants to do that. So just a general rule, even if, if you're a doctor, an alchemist or a magician or something like that, if you have something that you need to put into somebody's mouth or even if you have to poison somebody, try not to like surprise people with like, yeah, I, I want to surprise them with this citrus fruit I just put in my potion, like health potion or poison or something like that. You don't know if the guy's allergic and if it's gonna swallow up or not. So just good general rule of thumb, don't, don't put something in people's mouth without the mask. Heck, if we check this quick tip here, where he mentions that an alchemist should use various kinds of smelly, smoky and tasty stuff, you can still do that. You, you can still make your potion, but the potion you actually give to people you don't, you just, I mean, like, it, it's not the nasty one. You you use all your ingredients, you use your wheat, you use your rice flour, fume, your coloring of whatever, whatnot. You use your dry ice, everything into one bottle. That's your potion. 
but it's not the one that you give people. This is the show-off thing that you make. The other potion that you have over here, yeah, I don't have so many flasks. I don't have any flasks on me right now. This is your show potion. This here is the potion you're gonna give people, and it's just just clear water and maybe well maybe it's colored water. So if you made when you made this, just throw it out, do something with it. This here is what you're gonna go around with. This is what you're gonna give people. The clear water version of the colored water if you want to give it color. And yes, of course you can give it some taste, but again, ask people if you're gonna force something into somebody's mouth, then pour it out next to their face, or maybe not next to their face, but People don't have to drink it, they can still play on the effect. Because people can be really allergic to pretty much anything. The color that's that you, it's common food coloring, I'm, I think people can be allergic to that stuff. Heck, I've heard of people that are allergic to water, like regular tap water. And that to me just baffles my mind. I, I mean, that's just, just crazy. But the gist of these two quick tips here, and I, I can't even remember the first one anymore. You don't want to hurt people for real, so yes, think about people's allergies. And this also goes the other way around. People that are allergic, please do tell us people that don't know, because we don't know how this stuff works. And people that are not allergic, remember that you don't want to accidentally choke somebody. Is there citrus fruit in this? Is there shellfish in this? I don't think anybody's gonna use shellfish in a potion that's gonna smell horrible. But peanuts, nuts, chili. And if you want to avoid it completely, just use regular clean water. And if you're allergic to water, don't drink the water. Now, before I go on to tell you people to put quick tips down in the comment section below, that uh, I want to tell you that they're probably gonna pop up some few weird videos here in the next couple of weeks uh, on the channel for an event. Uh, the Loon of tournament, uh, which is a scenario I'm helping out with. Gonna put them out here on LabForge just to reach as many people as possible. It's a small, uh, it's a called a Settlers Con. It's basically lab, it's it's a normal lab event, but it's set in the conquest of Mithrodea world. It's the first uh, Mithrodea based scenario, official Mithrodea based scenario that are in Denmark. But uh, again, it's an international scenario. So it's going to be in English, Danish and German. Mainly most people are probably going to speak English and Danish because <laughs> most, most of Danish people speak that. Not a lot of people speak very good German, but German people, of course, come come and uh, participate in it. It's going to be fun. But it's going to be a tournament. It's going to be really fun. It, but there's going to be, it's there's a wedding. There's some other stuff. More on this uh, later. But if you live in Denmark and you want to go to this event, I can highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link to the Lunov page in the description, it's lunoff.dk. But I think that was probably more than enough shameless shelf promotion uh, for this event. Um, oh yeah, I can say one more thing. It's held in Østerskov's Efterskoles backyard. Might not sound as much, but they have a LARP town there. Østerskov Efterskole is the LARP school, and they have a LARP town in their backyard. That's where the tournament is going to be, guys. If you want to see how it looks, uh, there's some links, uh, not links, uh, pictures of it uh, on the uh, um, Love Forge's Instagram page. We were out there in the winter, early this year, and I took a few pictures and uh, spinned around with the camera and stuff like that. It's really nice. Enough shelf promotion for this uh, event. If you want to check it out, links in the description. Everything in is Danish, German, and English. Well, not here, but on the Lunov webpage. Now, if you have any quick tips, leave them down in the comment section below so we can put in here in a quick tip video and share it out to the other lapels on the rest of the world. And um, yeah, it can, of course, also be in-game quick tips. I've gotten a few, but I need to practice on my Jamaican accent for at least one of them. So <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. See you later, man.